So we're in the Don's Local Action Hub in Wimbledon, just off Plough Lane actually. So five minutes, five minutes walk from Plough Lane on Waterside Way. Uh, and what's happening here is that all the food comes in from the supermarkets, gets sorted into one week food boxes and gets taken out to the people that need it, either directly to the households or to other food banks and to other organisations. We've registered about 2,000 plus volunteers on any one day across food, stores, laptops, furniture, hotline. We've got north of 120 people actually involved um, in volunteering. Being back at Plough Lane definitely feels like a new era for the club and, uh, a, and a new era for the Dons Trust as well. I know we've just had the election, so these are, there's, there's so much energy on that board. Really, really exciting at the moment. M many people ask, what is the primary function of the Dons Trust? And I think the most, the most important thing is we're your representatives. We are the representatives of the owners of the football club. That's, that's an incredible responsibility, but it's an exciting responsibility. So we provide oversight to the football club and we support the football club and help, help them um, make, the, make the decisions that, that they have to do on a daily basis. Uh, so, and, we, and we're, looking, we're looking at how we do that even better with, with various reviews going on at the moment, such as the strategy review and the structural review, which are, which are enormous things for the club. I mean, the, our current aims state that we're aiming to get back to Plough Lane and get into the Football League. Well, they're a bit out of date, right? So we've got to, we've got to create new ones. And, and we're not just sitting there in a room with a with a laptop, we are speaking to everybody. We're speaking to the members, we're going to be speaking to all of the stakeholders from academy coaches to ladies team to first team manager. We're going to go right across the club and see what sort of club you want us to be. The Dons Trust needs to be a really, really strong oversight body so that when we deliver the strategy to the football club and the football club creates the plan and we then oversee the delivery against that plan. We feel as long as, as, long as we're being intelligent and engaging um, at the top as representatives of the owners, that we can get, um, we can have a real impact on, on the success on the pitch and off the pitch. You know, we, 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 wanna, we wanna have input and support everybody making that stadium a 365 day a year stadium. Um, which in turn, if we do that, you know, we're, we'll be generating some serious money that we can invest into the playing side, not just the playing budget, but the facilities, the coaches, um, whatever the manager and coaches need to make stuff happen. We'd like to push the one club ethos more. We'd like to celebrate what the, the academy's doing, what the ladies are doing, what, the, you know, what Don's local action, what the foundation are doing what everyone is doing across the club as well as the first team on a Saturday afternoon. So communicating that, being, do, doing more things like this, getting out and, and speaking to the fans is, is, is really you know, more important than it's ever been. We are back. We are home. We are Wimbledon. If you, if you look at where I'm standing, I'm standing in the Don's Local Action Hub and there will be, so far we have boxed up 150,000 plus one week food boxes, 1,300 laptops, furniture, we've got mentoring starting. Uh, there is, just, just within Don's Local Action alone, there is an incredible amount of talent and energy for doing good stuff around our community and that is so exciting. Um, in terms of other areas of the club, you know, the, the foundation is, is really picking up the pace in terms of helping with citizenship programmes in the community. The, the, the academy, you know, we're fresh off, fresh off the back of beating Chelsea um, at the under 15s and beating Derby at under 13s and doing all these, doing all these mad things, which if you look at just, um, you know, facilities and, and, and the rest of it, training facilities and amount of money, etc. You know, Chelsea, Chelsea have their players living at their training grounds. You know, we, we just beat them 3-2. Uh, and the score of two of their goal goals was uh, was actually a Wimbledon Academy player before he went to Chelsea. So there's there's, there's a lot of good stuff. Uh, personally, I hope that when we go out to the stakeholders during the strategy review, I hope that people tell us that they want us to be a brilliant community club. I'd love us to be the best in England.
I think we can. I think we're up there. I think we're top of the Premier League already in community activities and that is that is hugely exciting. Why is it important? Well, we want to bring more people into uh, at the, the football club's surroundings. We, we, we think that football can be a real force for good at the heart of its community is the foundation and Don's local action approving. Uh, we, we think that um, there is opportunity to help people who are perhaps less fortunate in our boroughs through the medium of football. Um, we, we think that sports clubs up and down the country can really harness their fan bases to do good stuff and we're doing that. So I think and, and, and all clubs have community initiatives, you know, we're not, we're not unusual in that, I just think we do it really, really well. It is just going to be ridiculously emotional when the fans are allowed back. Even when I've been fortunate enough to go into the ground and see what is, you know, we let's pinch ourselves, it's a £32 million stadium on Plough Lane in the heart of our community. Right, so when, when I walk up to that ground, for me, I will be thinking about all the people that made it happen. That's not just the... The, the people that put their hands in their pockets, and there are so many of them, you know, it's, it's ridiculous the generosity that, that has been shown by, by the fans and, and the community, not just Wimbledon fans that have helped with, um, with money to, to make it happen. Um, but, but everyone from stretcher bearers to turnstile operators to stewards to people working on the marketing and the media um, to coaches, uh, to you know, ev everyone, everyone across the club has, has made such an impact on on making this happen. You know, it was it was 14 months ago that we were sat there at Kings Meadow, December the 9th, and we were basically looking at uh, only for a brief moment because we quickly put that right. But we were very, we were we were briefly looking at losing fan ownership. That was a real option being presented. It was the option being presented. And as a group of fans, we got together, and we we, we destroyed that. You know, when when we've seen when we've seen the the club go through all its its previous um, heartache and and reforming the challenges that we have risen to, and I think I think we all know the headlines. I think we all know that it's you know it is a film script, and the scale of what we've done is is absolutely immense. But now, what really excites me is we're now looking at the we're looking at the next steps. You know, that strategy review, strategy review, two words can sound quite dull. It isn't, it really isn't. And please don't see it like that. This is our opportunity to shape what we're gonna do for the next five, 10, 20 years. That's dead exciting. You know, we, we're gonna be talking about our on-pitch objectives. Like, who do we wanna be? How far can we really go? Like, how much can we get that stadium um, a 365 day stadium, you know, with our own pub, with hospitality full every week, with events and weddings and stuff down there. You know, how, how much can we, how much can we really do to make that happen? And what structure do we need to make that happen? And and we're in that now. We've started that process now. We're all thinking about it now. And you're all going to be asked for your input. The the Plough Lane Bond showed us. It re, it just reminded us. I, I think as Wimbledon fans we have we have occasional reminders at quite how strong we can be and how much we we don't really we just see things as obstacles to get round rather than rather than things that are gonna stop us. So to get to get from the 9th of December to launching a bond with many, many people helping to put that together um, by the middle of January and then to raise the most amount of money any bond has raised in the history of English football by standing outside train stations and walking 2,000 streets in the area to distribute leaflets. Just think about that for a second. We're outside train stations in the rain talking to people about investing in a football club in the middle of January when everyone's miserable and we didn't even have a pandemic to make people miserable at that stage. Right, we're doing that. We're engaging with the community and I'm standing there and having people coming up to me saying, I've never been to a football match. I've never been to a Wimbledon match. I've moved to the area and we're going to get season tickets. We love what you're doing. You know, that, that, is, that is the power of a fan base and particularly a power of a Wimbledon fan base. Fan ownership is absolutely critical. It is non-negotiable. 
it's it gives us it, it is who we are it's what we are and people people think sometimes that to have fan ownership means that we need to be small in other areas or we don't or we maybe we won't achieve on the pitch maybe we won't do the other stuff hey well guess what we can do all of it um because we've shown what we've shown what we can do and we'll keep doing it it's not an either or with us as Wimbledon fans I don't think that fan ownership should be any sort of barrier it should be a stimulus uh, if people want to get involved with the club they know they know what the rules are we've, we've set the rules we've set our own rules that's exciting uh, there are there are many people around us who are doing stuff who who aren't Wimbledon fans and they're doing it because of because of what it means you know if I, if I go back to this initiative with Don's local action you know there's plenty of people who aren't Wimbledon fans we're doing it because we want to be strong in the community I, I think, and there's a big volunteer project ongoing, the Don's Makers project that many of you will know about, um, I've always said that the moment that we really know we've, we've hit the mark as a football club in the heart of our community that means more than a football club is when non-Wimbledon fans volunteer. Um, and we're already starting to see that. We've got some incredible talent around the club that is attaching itself to the club because of what we mean. So. That extends to fundraising to me. If we need to, if we need to raise funds in the future, then we do it as a force for good in a community. We are back. We are home. We are Wimbledon. We don't need to look beyond Google and YouTube to see that a club with a relatively low budget, bear in mind we are going to have a salary cap, um, can compete. You know, we, we've been to we've been to Anfield, Old Trafford, White Hart Lane. Stanford Bridge. We've we've beaten all of the all of the clubs there um, comfortably on, on a regular basis with a very low budget. So um, I, I don't think our I don't think our managers use budget um, as an excuse. Our academy managers and coaches don't use budget as an excuse. Um, we we just need to prepare better. We need to find when we bring players into the club, uh, whether they're under 12s or or um, potential first teamers, we need to bring in the right characters. Uh, my my view is that that we we just need to keep celebrating the um, the work that the academy's done and that that the football people right across the club are doing because we've always fought punched above our weight even when we came into the combine counties there were there were clubs on bigger budget you know with Dean two thousand Wallingford they had they, they, these these clubs had had bigger budgets than us and as we went up there always seemed to be one or two that would have higher budgets so. I'd, Budget doesn't bother me. If you've got the spirit that we've got, if you've got the planning, if you've got the attitude, if you've got the characters, if you're developing, if we are creating a learning environment at AFC Wimbledon that is better than the others, right? If we get that learning environment right, we don't need to we don't need to worry about budget. So the spirit the spirit that we've got at this club it, it, and people will have different ideas of how long, how far it goes back. Does it go back to 63? Does it go back to 75 and Leeds? Does it go back to 77, getting into the Football League? Does it go back to getting into the first division um, in in such a short space of time, nine years? Does it does it come back to you know losing losing our club and our league position and reforming? Um, does it does it go back to being told that you know? Fan ownership was in jeopardy, and going off and raising five and a half million quid. Uh, does it? You know, people all have different ideas as to where that spirit really comes from. But you can't. Many many clubs would struggle to put together one or two of those. We seem to do them on a on a kind of a, almost annual basis. Um, so, you know, to remind everybody, you know, we are about to enter the you know, a thirty two million pound stadium. Right, and we've achieved so much, so much together, and that's 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 the spirit. We we just feel that we can, we can keep achieving. We can keep knocking down those hurdles. I think I think when you've had less money than the others, you needed to think of the other ways of making a making a difference, having an impact. And if that's on the pitch, that is making sure that the the spirit is is one of hard work and good planning, good preparation. Um, off the pitch, it's, it's coming together and being, being as unified as you possibly can be. There'll always be differences of opinion, but really, really harnessing 
the right skills from the right people. You know, as, as an example, I, I'm putting together a strategy review, as I've talked about. I'm not, I'm not a strategy review um, expert. I'm, I don't think I've ever done a strategy review, to be honest. Um, but there are a hell of a lot of good people around that can make it happen and make it a really, really good one. So it's a case of, you know, am I capable of bringing the right people in to the right part of that review to make it something that's fantastic? You know, volunteer project, the Don's Makers working title project that we're working on at the moment, you know, that is, um, I've never done a volunteering project review before or, or worked on one. But again, there are so many good people on it and really looking at how we make that the best. We're not looking to kind of create something that we just scrape by with. The bond, we wouldn't have been happy on the bond if we'd raised a couple of million quid or two and a half or three million quid. That wouldn't have been, that, that wouldn't have felt, that wouldn't have felt good. Uh, we wanted it to be the best out there. It was the best. Um, Don's local action, we wanted it to be the, the biggest help to the community. Um, and it is, you know, we, we, we didn't set back in, in the Combine Counties League and think, oh, do you know, wouldn't it be nice if we got up to the Ryman League? Not at all. As a football club, we were playing in parks. It just has to, everyone has to remember, you know, the average crowd in the Combine Counties League was 50. Right? We, 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 were, going, we were turning up at grounds and, and going on railings, and it always used to confuse me how um, they could even announce a capacity for a ground because it wasn't a stadium, it just had railings. What, what is that, 10 deep? Is it 15 deep? Is it 5 deep? What's the capacity? Um, and we, and we, just, we just went up and up and up, and we did it through good people doing good things in a unified way. That's what, that's what I'm proudest of. I, I think just people who are, who are giving, giving their time, to, to a, their time and intelligence and thought, and often you know, pain before we get to the final, um, to get get to the final result, that I think that's what makes me most proud of being a Wimbledon fan. I feel that all of the people that are involved in this story have basically shown what can be done um, outside of this story. You know, a, a small business or or a kid that's not good at maths and English at school, um, or a a kid that's not particularly sporty. You know, they can all look to this story and say, well, do you know what? They were, uh, re you know, they lost their football club. They recreated it, and they've moved into a 32 million pound stadium, and they've did it by doing this, this, and this. That's incredible. That is awe-inspiring. That should give confidence to any any kid, any kid out there. So that we we have a responsibility, I believe, to tell our story. We should be ambassadors for football, and we should be going out there and saying what we've done and how we've done it because it should give encouragement to everybody out there away from this football club. My vision might not be the same as others and that's what the strategy review is all about but I'd like us certainly in the medium term to become a sustainable championship club you know whether people agree with that or not is, um, is, is up for question now and that's exciting I'm very happy uh, for others to have completely different views um, I'd like us to be the best community club in the country um, and for me that means going out and doing maximum good in our communities by using fans and other people around us to do that and to spread our messages and to help people that need help. I want us to have a, an academy that is nationally recognised and um, is producing players that, that we really feel like our own. I, I, cer I certainly think that there is a um, there is something special about seeing one of our own go out on that pitch. Every you know, that's why the song exists, right? Every, from Newcastle to Rochdale to Wimbledon, we all we all want to see our own out on the pitch. That's not decrying others that come in. Of course, we've always got to have that, but it it does feel special when we've got our own out on that pitch. So our our vision is just to my vision is to keep that momentum going and keep keep smashing down those barriers. The DNA of this football club is work ethic, not bothering about budgets, being smarter and stronger than, than others, feeling that this club is more than a football club and, and just just having no fear, just just having that Looking at our past, looking at our present, 
and realising that actually in the f in the future of this mad world world that is football, we've got we don't actually have much to fear. Um, we're not putting ourselves under pressure. We're just we're just keeping going in a very very positive trajectory and and. I'm pretty sure I know where this will end up. We are back. We are home. We are Wimbledon.